Hey everyone, did you know that some people comb their hair? <laughs> I didn't. But either way, I wanted to talk about the next generation iPad Air, which rhymes with hair, so that is somewhat related, because there's a lot of rumors out there spreading about the next generation iPad Air 4, I guess, you know, Apple won't call it that, but we'll call it that. A couple of them are realistic, and I think most of them are just downright stupid, so I had to talk about it. Yes, I've made these types of points before, so forgive me if I sound redundant, but sometimes if I repeat myself, it's because I really want my point to get across to Apple, who definitely watches every single one of my videos. Videos, let's begin. All right, so first off, Makatakara is claiming that Apple is working on an 11-inch iPad Air successor. So that makes sense to me because Apple has been known in the past for introducing new technologies and new designs onto the iPad Pro and then later down the road, recycling that old iPad Pro design, beefing up the internals a little bit, but using, you know, the old traditional design so that you can make what we currently have as the iPad Air today. You know, all that really is, that 10 and a half inch $500 iPad, it's basically just a slightly tweaked version of the 10 and a half inch iPad Pro. So what did they do? They took off ProMotion, they give it the A12 chip instead of the A10X. Cameras just a tad different, but for the most part like the accessories still work with that. It supports the same smart connector as that 2017 iPad Pro. So it makes sense. You know, they recycle that old design. So when I heard 11 inch iPad Air, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. They're probably gonna recycle that old iPad Pro design. But then... <laughs> Uh, an up-and-coming leaker, which has a decent track record, but I think a lot of the things they've predicted are because Ming-Chi Kuo was saying them anyway, and they were just kind of repeating what they were hearing. It didn't really feel super concrete, but Love to Dream is claiming that not only is Apple working on an 11-inch iPad Air, but that iPad is going to have a mini-LED display, thinner bezels than the current iPad Pro, and no notch, which an iPad has never had a notch, so I'm not sure why it would, uh, but it would also have a fingerprint reader built into the display, which uh, I'm, I'm annoyed that I have to explain how stupid that is to people, but as Apple has worked so far, which they usually like to keep things fairly simple and straightforward, if there's no home button on the device, then you have to swipe up to go home, and that's why Face ID has been adopted across both iPads and iPhones, because it's like, hey, you tap anywhere on the display to wake it up, and then you swipe up to go home. Because you're looking at the device, when you tap it, you know, that's how it unlocks. The stupidity of adding Touch ID to the iPad underneath the display is the iPad's kind of meant to be used in multiple orientations. And I know we have Touch ID on our older iPads already, but those have a home button, okay? So you rest your finger, it unlocks, and then you press to go home. This new process would require a dedicated portion of the display because they're not going to make the entire screen a fingerprint reader. That would be, for one, really expensive, and two, probably still slower than Face ID because you have to rest your finger there for a while so it can really get a read on you. So you'd have to remember every time you want to turn on your iPad to rest your finger at a specific place that is not, you know, backed by a home button anymore. So that involves either tapping the display to wake it up, resting your finger there, and then swiping to go home. Because for those of you wondering, well, why doesn't Apple just let you go straight to the home screen as soon as you unlock the device? Well, because they've advertised all of these Face ID features, which the whole selling point of Face ID is like, hey, you can see you got notifications, but the notifications won't reveal any private data until it authenticates first. And Apple to this day still has no option for biometrics to jump you straight to the home screen because Apple is very pro lock screen. They want you to be able to see your messages and then go through a very intentional swiping process before you get to the home screen. The touch ID on the iPad thing mm, doesn't work. It doesn't really make sense. So I think they have internal sources. I believe that. I just think they're hearing about prototypes or products that are definitely not coming out and tweeting about them as if they are coming out because that does not sound like something Apple would do with the next generation iPad Air. If they were doing mini LED, they would bring it to the iPad Pro first. And can I also emphasize how annoying it is that so many people see no face ID means no notch, okay? Just because there's no face ID doesn't mean there's no notch because you still have a front-facing camera and the iPad Pro still has a front-facing microphone right next to that camera. So I don't believe it's just like, hey, the bezels are gonna be even thinner on this one, so they have to go with Touch ID. It's like, for one, I don't think a Touch ID sensor underneath the display would be cheaper in the first place. For two, I don't think it would be better. It would be more complicated complicated to come up with this whole, you know, tap, unlock, swipe thing versus just what we have on the iPad Pros, which is tap, 
face ID works and then swipe up to go home when you're ready. iPad Pro just works in any orientation. And the whole point of having a little bit of bezel on the iPad Pro is that's where your thumbs can rest. If the bezels got much thinner, then you would start setting off the display on accident all the time. And it's okay that there's a little bit of bezel on the iPad because you can incorporate the camera into that. So whether or not you have face ID, there's got to be room for the camera on the front. So that's not going anywhere. That's why I didn't buy this whole iPad Air doesn't have a notch. It's like just because there's no face ID? That's not what the iPad Air 4 is going to be. I don't believe that rumor at all. Here's my prediction, which I've talked about in the past, but I want to reiterate for you today. The next generation iPad Air, which by the way is not coming anytime soon. It'll probably be like the end of this year. At the very, very soonest, like September is my guess. This is not a worldwide developers conference product. And it's possible that given the pandemic, it might not even come out till next year. But the last iPad Air is over a year old now. So I'm sure Apple's working on the follow-up and it makes a whole lot of sense that given iPad Pro has been refreshed for 2020, Apple's not selling the 2018 iPad Pro anymore. We're in kind of a similar setup that we were for the 10 and a half inch iPad Pro being recycled into an iPad Air. So the 11 inch version will just be kind of a recycled version of the 2018 iPad Pro. So maybe it'll come in a gold option like the North's Globe made an awesome concept of. Seriously though, how does he make these things? They look really good. So what I think Apple's gonna do, and you may not like some of these tech specs, but keep in mind, you have to make the next iPad Air good, but at the same time, not so good that no one buys the new iPad Pros. So that's why my guess is that the iPad Air 4 will have 60 hertz display. It'll look the same as the 2018 iPad Pro, but it won't have ProMotion. It's still gonna have Face ID though. You know, Apple's willing to put Face ID on cheaper products like the iPhone XR. So I think there's reason to believe they can put that on more affordable devices. It will still have USB-C. It will work with the Apple Pencil 2, which will be great. And it will work with the 2018 iPad Pro keyboard accessories with that new smart connector location. But you won't get the A12X chip because that's still like, you know, really, really fast. You'll probably get something like the A13, you know, which is powering the iPhone SE right now. It's really, really fast. It's not going to be A12Z fast, but it's decent. And the cameras, I expect to almost stay the same. You know, the current iPad Air has a basic 1080p camera on the front and back. This one, I would expect the same. You don't need to go crazy with the cameras on this one because this iPad is just trying to be enough for most people. If you care about the cameras, they're going to want you to go with the iPad Pro, which of course now has ultra wide LiDAR sensor, all kinds of cool stuff with it. But this iPad Air 4 will just have basic 1080p, 60 FPS cameras. And the biggest one I think a lot of people would be annoyed by, but it would be a good reason to opt for the iPad Pro instead of the Air. I think they would not bring the quad stereo speakers, which are really, really good on the iPad Pro. And it's very, very annoying to use an iPad when you only have speakers on one side. So maybe there's a way they can dumb down the speakers so that they're still stereo, but they're not quad like they are in the iPad Pro. But there has to be a big differentiating factor there. And I think stereo speakers, ProMotion, the A12Z chip, the extra cameras and stuff, that will make the iPad Pro worth the extra $300. But keep in mind, the 2020 iPad Pro will have been available for a while by the time the iPad Air 4 drops. So it's not going to be cannibalizing sales that much. It'll just be a reasonable, more affordable priced iPad that still has a lot of the features people appreciate about the iPad Pro. And maybe make it a little bit thicker. If that saves money, then go ahead. But yeah, don't believe this mini LED report thing or the Touch ID is coming underneath the display. I could be wrong, but it definitely sounds like something Apple would not do because when it comes to iPad Air and making more affordable iPads, it's basically just, what's the pro version? Oh yeah, let's make a cheaper version of that. Which honestly, I still think would be really popular. If you could spend 500 bucks on an iPad that looked like an iPad Pro and all you were missing out on was LiDAR, dual camera, ProMotion, you know, an insanely fast CPU as well as stereo speakers, a lot of people would buy that iPad. In fact, just getting more of the iPad lineup compatible with the Apple Pencil 2 would also make people really appreciative because the iPad Air in its current state, you know, it's fine. It's a decent iPad, but it's definitely getting dated now that we've had the updated iPad Pro design for nearly two years. So I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on the iPad Air 4. What do you think it should be? Let me know by hitting me up over on Twitter, joining my Discord. We can chat more about it there. This is your Apple Ship here, and don't believe everything you read, folks. The truth is out there. I'll see you in the next one.